Hey, what's up? This your boy, Big Man. You already know what it is, man. So let's get right to it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Drake. Now, for those of you who don't know, Drake dropped Certified Lover Boy. And people are saying it's a classic. Other people are saying they just love it as a good album. Some people don't like it at all. But regardless of that, man, there is a lot of drama following the release of this album, man. It looks like Drizzy took time to diss everybody he had an issue with at this point in time in rap. And he picked out some of the biggest stars in hip-hop specifically. Now, this is wild because it seems as everybody is going through the list, looking through the subliminals, and trying to figure out who Drake is talking about. It's so many clues dropped in there, it brings to light why Drake takes a little while with his writing process, man. Whatever they got going over there at OVO, man, they be working overtime. Because people have gone to dissecting these lyrics, and we finding somebody new each and every hour as they pass, man. But so far, let's talk about the three people that he's dissed on this album without a doubt, be it subliminal or otherwise, man. Now, before we get to the specifics, though, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And, man, let's get it. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, man, let's talk about the certified lover boy hit list. And, man, we can't start the hit list without talking about one person in particular, man, and that's Kanye West. It seems like Drake had the most heat for Kanye West on this album, man. So there's several different, you know, interpretations of where people have taken lyrics and said, yo, he's talking about Kanye here, he's talking about Kanye there. But the best example of Drake dissing Kanye on Certified Lover Boy is on a song called 7 a.m. on the Bridal Path. So it's an interesting title anyways, man, because if you look up Bridal, you don't know if he's talking about a horse. He had a song called 7 a.m. It's so much going on there. But on-site media, man, and I'll shout out them because I'm going to be referencing them from social media, and they basically broke down a couple of these different things. And I'm going to be looking at one where it takes the lyrics and it, it basically talks about, or it points out the points where they believe Kanye is being dissed. So there's a couple of parts here I want to point out, man. So let's start off by talking about this first part where it says, you over there in denial, we not neck and neck. It's been a lot of years since we seen you come correct. So obviously he's talking about somebody who used to come correct, who hasn't done it in a while. And there's only a few rappers he could be talking about on his level that did that, right? So obviously people pointed at that talking about none other than Kanye. Now at the bottom, it says this. It says, you cats hot to them little kids. You ain't famous to me. Told you I'm aiming straight for the head, not aiming to please. I could give a about who's designing your sneakers and tees. Now, we know that Kanye has a very famous fashion line, man. And he's done really well in the fashion game. So that seems like a shot right there, right? But he wasn't done, man. He also said this. He said, he said have somebody put you in a gilding. You play with my seed. Trust me, there's some... You really got to come and see to believe. So just baiting him with that line and saying that somebody played with his seed. Now, to be honest, I don't think that Kanye was the one that was playing with him like that. You know what I mean? Pusha T was the one who put out all the all the tea about everything that went on with him having a child that nobody knew about and all that and spilled all that on the Internet. You know what I mean? And when he, they were going back and forth. But it seems like he wasn't done yet there, man. It also seems like he was taking shots at none other than Charlemagne. Now, with Charlemagne, this is different. It's on another song called The Remorse. Now, The Remorse is the very last song on the album, right? And it's the second verse that fans have keyed in on and says that he's dissing Charlemagne. Now, this is the line that everybody is using. They're saying he said this. He said, from the bottom to the top, man, what's it like in the middle? From the lemon-faced radio host that love to be bitter. To my dogs in the game who wasn't pick of the litter. Drake raps on the new track. So basically, they're saying that Drake was saying that, that was using that verse to diss Charlemagne. Now, we know Drake sneak disses. We know Drake hardly ever, if ever, I don't think Drake has ever said a name, man, to be real with you. He tries to be more creative and let you know who he's talking about or make lines that the person that he's talking about knows that it's coming for them, even when the rest of the world doesn't. You know what I mean? There's been times with other rappers in the past, like Joe Budden and others, where they knew they were being dissed when they listened to the album, and people didn't pick up on it until they pointed it out themselves. And this seems like to be one of those hidden gems on the album, or at least one of the hidden disses. Now, I don't see 
where this people are saying this is Charlemagne because there's so many other hosts. But I mean, when you say in the middle, that means probably there's three people. Then he says Lemon Face Radio host, you know what I mean? And somebody who loves to be better. Obviously, Charlemagne has gotten his reputation on being a contrarian and being somebody who goes against the grain with his opinions and isn't afraid to say some of the things that other people are afraid to say. So maybe this is his opportunity to dig at him for something Charlemagne said about him previously when he was winning awards. And one time specifically when Drake had won the award, I think it was like the award for the artist of the decade or something like that. It was like in er, in late 2020 and Charlemagne made a snide comment, I guess, and the comment suggested that maybe Drake's era was over. And Drake obviously didn't take kindly to that. So he's shooting shots at Charlemagne. Now, another person that they're saying that he's dissing is Swiss Beats. Now, this comes as a surprise because Drake and Swiss Beats worked on the hit song You Fancy together. And man, it seemed like they had a good relationship. Now, this is up until about a year ago. And just like the Charlemagne situation, this beef goes back some time, right? So like last year sometime, Swiss Beats went on a rant where he was talking about a Busta Rhymes song with Drake or something like that. And he went to calling Drake out his name, man. He said he was a good kid, but talked about him being soft and all this stuff. And Swiss Beats probably put that under under the rug, man. He probably was like, I ain't even thinking about it. You know, it's, it's a done deal. But on this song called You Only Live Twice, Drake starts rapping and dissing none other than Swiss Beats. Now, in the song that everybody is attributing towards a diss to Swiss Beats, Drake raps this. He says, unthinkable when I think of the way these cats be acting. Yeah, you ne never did nothing and you play like we family, huh? Next thing you want to shoot me down, it can't be love. Not sure where you was trying to send it, it can't be up. That day you sounded like a, you fancy, huh? Now, basically calling him out of his name and, you know, using Swiss Beats diss back to him because Swiss Beats called Drake the same thing. You know what I mean? I can't use the name, but you already know what it is, man. And it's a female dog. You feel me? And basically, Drake is just throwing that back in his face in this way, man. Drake is very crafty with the wordplay, with the writing, with everything, man. And he doesn't forget anything. It's like he keeps a list. And he be checking it twice like Santa Claus out this joint, man. Now, there's also some people who caught some stray bullets, man. And none other than Justin LaBoy. Now, Justin LaBoy is famous for the show that he has with Diddy's son on the Revolt Network. And it's really, it's successful, man. And basically, he sits back and he politics with artists about their relationships and stuff like that. He sends out all these quotables to chicks on social media and stuff like that. I mean, the dude is really annoying to most dudes, you know. It's hard content for most guys to stomach, you know. And he goes overboard with a lot of the, you know, I hate to say it, man. But he, he, he goes overboard, man. I'm not going to call a dude out his name because he seems like a real good dude. But he has this catchphrase where he always says respectfully at the end of his words, at the end of his phrases, all that, right? Well, Drake used that against him as well. And I believe this was also in the song 7 a.m. So in the 7 a.m. song, he used that same line or he used respectfully as a cover up for, you know, knowing that, hey, man, we know you out here aligning yourself with Kanye and them. So he basically threw Justin LeBoy into the beef. Man. And this one threw me for a surprise because Justin LeBoy is one of the biggest Drake supporters on social media. I'm going to keep it real, man. So Justin LeBoy probably was like, what, man? You know what I'm saying? He was probably like not expecting this. So I'm guessing he wasn't dissing Justin LeBoy. Maybe he was just, you know, checking him a little bit or, you know, shooting a straight because he saw all the hype he was giving to Kanye the week prior on his album, where Justin LeBoy said this. He said, Kanye really got the weekend and Lil Baby on the same record. Don't add me tonight. Donda album of the year. So based, and he hashtag respectfully. So it seems petty to be honest with you, but it seemed like Justin LeBoy just, you know, rooting for Kanye a little too hard for Drake's liking. And Drake just had to shake it up a little bit and let him know that he's keeping, he's keeping record of everybody who's formed against him, man. Now, what's cool about this is these are all the surface level subliminal shots that people have found so far. Just wait until everybody's done dissecting this album and really breaking it down bar for bar. 
I bet they'll find more out there or at least more disses at these same people or whatnot. And Drake is real clever at how he hides these things in his verses, man. I mean, they really work overtime over there on this stuff, I guess. But man, what do you guys think? Do you think that Drake sending all these subliminal shots is a bad thing? Or do you think it's a good thing because it makes it more interesting when you listen to the album or a song a second or third time? Now with that, this been your boy Big Man. Do me a favor. Make sure, hold up, hold up, hold up. I ain't asked a real big question. Do you think any of these people are going to respond? Do you think Kanye is going to go into the dungeon with Pusha T and Consequence and cook up some random diss tracks for Drake? Or do you think this is a done deal once Drake said his piece? Now with that, this being your boy Big Man, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you get a notification every time I drop this out of content. And we out of here. Peace.